kindergartners. So it's me, Mrs. Christofferson again. Um, we covered last week a little bit of what's going on with this whole virus situation. And this week we have something a little bit different, but we're gonna do a brain break, just like we did last time before we get into our lesson, okay? So this one's a little tricky, all right? So you're gonna take your right hand, okay? And you're gonna touch your nose. And then you're gonna take your left hand and you're gonna touch your ears. Okay, on the opposite side. So left hand is going crossing across your nose and going to your right ear. Okay, so try that again. So right hand going on your nose. Left hand going on your right ear, crossing over. And then we're gonna switch. So your left hand is going on your nose and your right hand is going on your ear on the opposite side. And we're gonna switch. Right hand goes on the nose, left hand on the ear. And switch again. Switch, and then switch, and then switch. Whew. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna do it slow again, and then we'll do it a little faster. Ready? So, right hand on your nose, left hand on your ear, and then switch, and then switch, and then switch, and then switch. And then take a deep breath and raspberry it out. Good job. <laughs> All right, so today we are going to talk a little bit more about anxiety or feeling nervous or scared. So I know there are a few things about this virus and having our schedule change so much that might make you nervous. For example, we still don't know a lot about how long we're going to be out of school, right? We're just kind of learning as we go. And so we have to adjust every time we learn more. So it's pretty normal for kids and adults that things, it feels a little, um, we can feel a little nervous or have that kind of scared feeling if we don't know what's going on. That's pretty normal. So you probably have had nervous feelings before, before even all of this virus stuff happened, right? So maybe if you had to do something new that you weren't sure how you weren't sure how it would go, or you had to go somewhere new or you weren't sure what it would be like. So those kind of situations can sometimes make us nervous. All right. So I want you to take a minute and think about what does it feel like inside my body when I am nervous or when I am scared. So for example, sometimes my muscles get tight. So my back might get tight in my shoulders or my fists, right? Or even my legs. My body kind of squeezes my muscles together. Okay, that's one way you might feel scared inside your body or feel nervous. Um, sometimes when I get real nervous, I start shaking a little bit or I start moving around fidgeting a little bit because I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen, okay? So I want you to take a minute and think about what for you, how feeling nervous feels for you inside your own body, okay? So take a minute and I want you to act that out right in your seat. So if you are a person that your muscles get squeezed, squeeze your muscles, okay? Or do whatever it is that your body does when it's nervous. So we all kind of know what that feels like, right? Yeah. So today we're going to read a story. All right. I'm going to read it here on the camera with you so you can follow, follow along. And this story is about someone who felt nervous just like that, but then learned some skills about how to help themselves feel better. So the story we're going to read is called Daniel Visits the Doctor. It was a beautiful day in the neighborhood and Daniel was home, playing doctor. Okay, Tidy, it's time for Dr. Daniel to give you a checkup, Daniel giggled as he opened his toy doctor kit. Just then, Mom Tiger came into the room. Oh, hello, Doctor. Have you seen my little tiger, Daniel? Mom asked. Mom, it's me, Daniel. I'm not really a doctor, Daniel giggled. Mom smiled and ruffled Daniel's fur. Well, Daniel, time to stop playing because we have to get going, Mom said. Where are we going, asked Daniel. We're going to see Dr. Anna today, said Mom. 
it's time for your checkup. But mom, I'm one stripe scared to go for a checkup, said Daniel. What will happen there? Okay, so two things to notice. Do you notice how Daniel Tiger is feeling right now? Kind of scared, right? Maybe a little nervous. Okay, he doesn't know what's going to happen at the doctor's office. All right, but what does he choose to do to help him feel better? He asks his mom a question. He asks, what will happen there? Mom put her arm around Daniel and saying, when we do something new, let's talk about what we'll do. And how does Daniel's mom help him not feel nervous? She's going to talk about what they're going to do at the doctor's office so he knows what he can expect. Mom showed Daniel what would happen at the doctor's office and started to draw. The first thing that happens at the doctor is that you wait in the waiting room. Daniel remembered that Dr. Anna's waiting room had a fish tank, books, and toys too. So Mom Tiger is helping Daniel remember some of the things he may have already learned about what to expect. The next thing that happens is that Dr. Anna will check your body to make sure it's healthy and strong. She'll check your heart. Thump, thump. She'll check your ears. Tickle, tickle, tickle. She'll check your eyes. Blink, blink. And she'll check your throat. Ah. Uh, will I have to get a shot? Daniel asked Mom. Mom shook her head no. Not today. Daniel took Mom's pictures to Dr. Anna's with him. It's like a book, said Daniel as they headed out the door. It is like a book, said Mom Tiger. Let's see if you can find all the things we do in our book in Dr. Anna's office. Okay, said Daniel. It's time for a checkup, so we're off to the doctor's office. Won't you ride along with me, sang Daniel and Mom Tiger, as Trolley rolled toward Dr. Anna's office. Wow, said Daniel as he looked around Dr. Anna's office. The waiting room looks just like the picture we drew. Daniel ran over to the fish tank. Hi, fishies, blub, blub, blub. And now, said Mom, we wait. Wait, wait, wait in the waiting room. Okay, I want you to remember that Daniel's mom said that he would be able to find some of the things in his drawing at the doctor's office. Do you see anything there that Daniel had drawn before he came to the doctor's office? While he was waiting in the waiting room, Daniel made believe that the fish and the fish tank were going to see the doctor too. Sometimes if we imagine or play what something might be like. It can help us be less nervous. If we imagine that it will go well, that will help us have good feelings when we go to try that new thing. Daniel Tiger and Tiggy Tiger called Dr. Anna. It's time for your checkups. Follow me. Mom held Daniel's hand as they followed Dr. Anna. Daniel climbed up on the table and looked around curiously. What was going to happen next? Dr. Anna smiled and sang to Daniel. When we do something new, let's talk about what we'll do. First, Dr. Anna listened to Tiggy's heartbeat with a stethoscope. Thump, thump, Dr. Anna said with a smile. Then Dr. Anna listened to Daniel's heartbeat. Thump, thump, your heart is strong and healthy, Daniel, said Dr. Anna. Dr. Anna even let Daniel listen to his own heart with a stethoscope. Thump, thump, Daniel thought that was so cool. So notice that Dr. Anna noticed that Daniel was feeling nervous again. And what did she do? She helped him know what to expect. So she explained things before she did them, okay? So let's say that you're at the doctor's office or you're doing something new. Maybe you could ask grown-ups around you to explain what's going on so that you feel less nervous. Dr. Anna used her otoscope to check Tiggy's ears. Tickle, 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 Dr. Anna said. Otoscope is a really good word. That's the instrument that doctors use to look inside your ear to make sure they're healthy. Then Dr. Anna checked Daniel's ears. Tickle, tickle, tickle. The otoscope does tickle, Daniel giggled. Dr. Anna checked Daniel's eyes. Blink, blink. Then she checked Daniel's throat. Ah. Dr. Anna checked Tiggy's height and weight. Tiggy was a healthy weight and three stripes tall. So again, Dr. Anna is doing things to Daniel, for Daniel Tiger and for Tiggy to show what Daniel Tiger can expect. Then she checked Daniel's height and weight. Daniel was a healthy weight and eight stripes tall. That's the perfect number of stripes for a tiger your age, Dr. Anna said. Daniel and Tiggy, you are both done with your checkups, said Dr. Anna, and you both get a heart sticker for being such good patients. Terrific. Thanks, Dr. Anna, said Daniel. Back in the waiting room, Daniel saw his friend, O the Owl. Hello, Daniel. I'm here for my checkup, said O the Owl, looking ner nervous. 
You are? asked Daniel. I just had my checkup. What was it like? asked Old Owl. You can read this book I made with my mom, said Daniel, handing O the book. It will tell you all about it. A book? said O the Owl happily. I love books. Thanks, Daniel. So how do you think Daniel's feeling right now? He's smiling. He's done with his doctor's appointment. I think he feels pretty good. And he was able to use some skills and some help from the grown-ups around him to not feel so nervous. And then what did he do? He turned around and helped his friend that was feeling nervous by explaining that it was going to be okay and then showing him some information about what he can expect. Daniel and Mom Tiger walked out of Dr. Anna's office. Trolley was waiting for them. Hi, Trolley, said Daniel. Guess what? I'm nice and healthy, and so is Tiggy. Ding, ding, said Trolley, and then took Daniel and Mom Tiger all the way home. Thanks for coming with me and Tiggy to the doctor's office. Did you find all the things I drew in my book in Dr. Anna's office? Knowing what was going to happen helped me feel good about going to the doctor, and it might help you feel good too. Ugga mugga. Thanks for reading that book with me. So now I want to talk about the skills and things that Daniel Tiger did that helped him feel better when he was nervous. So the first thing, Daniel Tiger told his mom how he was feeling. So do you remember in the very beginning of the book, he said, he told his mom, I basically feel nervous to go to the doctor's office, right? He felt it in his body, just like we did at the beginning of the lesson, we kind of thought about how our muscles might feel or our hands, okay, when we feel nervous. The second thing that Daniel did was that he asked his mom questions, okay? It's okay to ask grown-ups questions, especially if you feel nervous or a little bit scared, right? And sometimes finding the answers can help us feel a little better. The third thing that happened was that Mom Tiger told Daniel the information she knew about what the doctor's office would be like. So for this situation, Mom Tiger knew a lot about what the doctor's office would be like. She has probably been there before, okay? Now, the tricky thing with this virus, if that's what you're feeling nervous about, the grown-ups that you trust <laughs> might tell you all the information they know, but it might not be a lot of information. Because like I said earlier in our video, we're still learning about this, all right? And we're not exactly sure what's going to happen in the future. So you might ask a question like, how long is it going to be until I go back to school? And the grown-up you ask might say, you know, I don't know. And it's the truth. It's not, it might be a little frustrating if you really wanted to know, but it's the truth because nobody really knows right now. So that's why it's important to know that Mom Tiger told Daniel the information she knew. And then the last thing is that Dr. Anna helped Daniel by showing him what she was going to do on Tiggy before doing it to Daniel. So this is something that Dr. Anna chose to do on her own and it really helped Daniel feel better because he was able to see what was going to happen before it actually happened. Now, let's say you would like this to happen, but the grown-ups in your life don't know that, all right? You might ask them, for example, if you, let's say you're learning how to cook something new, okay? You're hanging out with maybe your dad and you want to learn how to cook, but you've never done this before and you're a little nervous you're going to mess it up. So you could say, hey dad, will you show me how to do this and then I can do it after you? And I bet you that grown up will, right? Something you can ask for. Okay, so before we end our lesson, there's one more thing I want to show you that I like to teach people that helps me and helps them feel a little better when they might feel nervous, okay? So this is called figure eight breathing. Have you ever seen a figure eight before? It's kind of a shape like an eight, right? An eight has a loop on the bottom and a loop on the top, okay? So I, the first thing I want you to do is take your finger, hold it up like I am, and trace this shape with a loop on the bottom and a loop on the top. Loop on the bottom and a loop on the top. And you notice it kind of crosses in the middle, right? Okay. So that's the first part of figure eight breathing. Now let's imagine that this figure eight was like tracing how it was, or our breathing basically. 
let's pretend that this figure eight is tracing our breathing, right? So, pause for a minute. When we do our loop going up to the top, we're going to breathe in. And then when we do our loop to the bottom, we're going to breathe out, okay? So let's practice. Put your finger right in the middle, and we're going to do a loop to the top. Ready? Breathe in. And we're back to the middle, so breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Because we're going to loop it to the top and breathe out. Okay, good job. Now pause. Okay, now if you are taking a deep, 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 deep breath in and your whole lungs feel like they're going to explode, that's too much air. Alright, sometimes that even makes people feel worse, right? So we're just going to take a normal breath. But the trick is, on the bottom, we're going to try and go a little bit slower. Okay, so normal breath on the top and then slower on the bottom. Okay, can you try it with me? Put your finger in the middle again. And we're going to go normal breath in. And then nice and slow out. Pause. Did you see how slow I did that? Okay, let's do that three times in a row. So <laughs> that is our figure eight breathing, okay? Now, I want to show you a pro tip, okay? <laughs> a pro tip for this, all right? So often when I talk to kids about this, I like them to trace their figure eight, just like you trace on a paper, but on their body, okay? So for example, if my leg was right here, let's see, pretend this is my leg instead of my arm. I might put my finger on there and trace a figure eight as I do that breathing, okay? And then you have breath and you have this feeling of your finger touching on your leg or on your arm, or I can even do it like right here, okay? Um, and if you can focus on that, if you can pay attention to how your finger feels on your skin, okay or how your breath feels going in and out it helps you calm down a little bit so I like that too so let's do it one more time I'm gonna have you pick a spot on your body it could be your arm I'm gonna do up here because you can see it in the camera but it could be on your leg like on the top of your leg or on your chest right here okay so pick a spot and put your finger there I'm gonna put mine right here and we'll do the figure at breathing except this time I'm gonna trace up my arm and down still on my arm okay so ready breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out and pause all right Good job, kindergarten. You have a new skill. You can do that figure eight breathing at home, at school, anywhere you go that you feel like you feel a little nervous, but you'd like to calm down a little bit. So I will see you next week. Have a good time. And